It is 648. This is your morning in eight minutes. Right now, the Cobb County Sheriff's Office needs your help finding a missing man. Take a look at your screen. Alexander Gilmore was last seen in the early morning hours on April 6th at the Dollar General on Old Highway 411 in Newport. Officials say Gilmore suffers from multiple mental disorders. If you see him or know anything, call police. And right now, a La Follette man is behind bars this morning, accused of causing a deadly crash in Middle Tennessee. It happened last month. Two people and a dog died when a tractor trailer jackknifed on I-40, causing several wrecks. The Campbell County Sheriff's Office says 36-year-old Brandon Lee Brock was behind the wheel of the tractor trailer. Deputies arrested Brock on Wednesday. He'll be taken to the Smith County Jail in Middle Tennessee. And we now know the name of the woman killed in a crash on Pellissippi Parkway. Police say a Ford pickup hit and killed 29-year-old Annette Williams. She was riding a stand-up electric scooter on the interstate when the truck hit her. The driver stayed on scene and is cooperating with the investigation. Well, no one's hurt after a fire destroyed a North Knoxville home. KFD responded to the intersection of West Oak Hill and Sunrise Avenue around 9 o'clock yesterday morning. A spokesperson tells us it took crews more than an hour and a half to put out the flames. One firefighter was treated at the scene for a heart-related issue we're told will be okay. Right now, tens of thousands of people are in Sevier County for the Pigeon Forge Rod Run. Today is day two of the annual car show. Expect major delays if you're headed that way today and tomorrow. The Sheriff's Office says they've brought in extra officers from surrounding counties and states to help manage the crowds and the traffic. The car show centers around the LeConte Event Center. Tomorrow is the last day. And right now, law enforcement agencies say it's a recruiting crisis. Staffing shortages across the country means some communities are underprotected. Officials in Rome County are now addressing the problem. Right now, the Sheriff's Department has a total of 74 people on staff to cover a community of around 55,000 people. Officials tell us the shortage of staff comes from burnouts and low salaries. The county commission passed a new budget that includes raises and more benefits for starting and existing officers, a $7,000 raise. The department says it's planning on having more recruiting and hiring events soon as the budget changes could attract more people. And a Knox County K-9 is retiring. Natan had his last shift Wednesday, according to a post from the department. He served with the Knox County Sheriff's Office for five years. In August, he pinched a nerve in his back. The department did not say if that's why he's retiring. Officials say they do hope there's a lot of rest, relaxation, and snacks in his <laughs> retirement. Well, some good news this morning is Tennessee's First Lady Maria Lee says she is now in remission following successful treatment for lymphoma. Lee was diagnosed with the cancer in August of last year. She says she, says she just completed a successful stem cell transplant in February. She says she will be monitored closely for the next five years. And we're following new details this morning. Air National Guardsmen charged in connection with the recent link of sensitive intelligence documents online is expected to be in court today. The FBI took the suspect into custody yesterday in Massachusetts. 21-year-old Jack Teixeira is accused of posting highly classified documents detailing the U.S. involvement in the war in Ukraine on the gaming platform Discord. Federal officials are investigating how he gained access to the highly classified documents, as well as how those documents were able to circulate on social media for so long undetected. And former President Donald Trump now back in Florida after sitting in on a deposition yesterday in New York City. The former president answered questions surrounding accusations by the state's attorney general of business fraud within the Trump organization. They're accused of misstating property values in order to get loans and other benefits. He's denied any wrongdoing. The civil case is scheduled to go to trial in October. We'll take a look at this. The Fort Lauderdale International Airport is expected to somehow reopen this morning after a historic amount of rain fell in the city. Forecasters say the city was hit by more than 26 inches of rain in a 24 hour period. That's more than 40% of Fort Lauderdale's annual rainfall in just one day. Rescuers went door to door in neighborhoods by boat. City officials are calling this a once in a thousand years event. Right now, more than two dozen Knoxville runners are gearing up for Monday's Boston Marathon. It's a record number for the Knoxville Endurance Group, who train in the early morning hours at places like the Tom Black Track on UT's campus. Now, most of these runners will arrive in Massachusetts by tomorrow. We'll let you know how they finish. Monday also marks 10 years since the Boston Marathon terror attack. And tonight, playoff hockey's back in East Tennessee with the season on the line for the Knoxville Ice Bears. They dropped game one last night in Huntsville. Tickets for tonight's game, just $8. Puck drops at 7.30 at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. Ice Bears need a win tonight to force game three in Huntsville on Sunday. 
WVLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols. The Tennessee baseball team on the road tonight for a three game series in Fayetteville, taking on the fifth ranked Arkansas Razorbacks. First pitch is tonight at 8 o'clock. You can catch the action on the SEC network. And the Lady Vols softball team also on the road. Tonight they start a three game weekend series against the Kentucky Wildcats. You can stream tonight's game on the SEC network. Plus, first pitch in Lexington is set for 6 30. And tomorrow, spring practice wraps up for Tennessee football. You'll get your first look at the new squad as the orange and white game returns to Neyland Stadium for the first time in three years. Tickets for tomorrow's game will be $5. You'll need to buy them ahead of time online. We have a link to do that in the WVLT News app. Make sure you get there early for the first ever Vol Village Music Festival featuring Knoxville's own Emily Ann Roberts and Matt Stillwell. That starts at noon. Kickoff is set for 2.30. If you can't make it, you can stream it on the SEC Network Plus. And just a reminder, make sure you join us tomorrow morning right here on WVLT for our Orange and White Special. Ted Hall, along with our WVLT sports team and our VolQuest partners, will have a complete look at what you can expect from this year's team. We'll also talk a little baseball, a little softball. That's all tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock right here on WVLT. It's 6.54. Let's get a look at your traffic with Whitney. You're in good shape heading out the door on this Friday morning. Taking a look at the traffic flow on I-40 right around Hall of Fame Drive. Still pretty quiet ahead of that morning rush, but it's going to be a busy one. If you're moving through Sevier County today as that rod run set to get underway at 9 o'clock, maybe avoid the parkway if at all possible. Take the scenic route to the Smokies instead. Heads up on Sunday, a lot of road work is going to slow you down, including this project in Campbell County on 75 southbound and road work taking place in Jefferson County, affecting both sides of I-40 from that exit for 92 to Route 113. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. It's 655. Now I wanted to give you that big picture look as to why we have more afternoon and e uh, really afternoon storms. You can see some batches reaching up into our area now. When we crank up the heat and that center of low pressure gets closer, the coverage will go up. So we do have some rain right now coming up and over into Monroe County that is going to keep moving northwest towards Loudoun and Roan County. So I'll be live tracking that for you coming up on the CW. It does leave most of us mostly cloudy with isolated rain and mid to upper 50s. It's a warm morning. Look at the sun kind of peeking along the horizon here downtown Knoxville. We warm up to midday, low 70s, then upper 60s this afternoon as that 60% coverage of our area and rain and storm spins through and moves away from our area with spotty rain to round out your Friday. Now the second system is a cold front, so it has the more traditional west to east movement on Sunday. So if you don't get the rain that you were hoping for today for that garden, that lawn, notice we have another quarter to a half an inch in parts of our area on Sunday. So again, that difference here is the on and off rain and storms today and then the cold front Sunday, but nestled in between is still warmth and sunshine with your Saturday. Then we'll feel the effects of that cold front on Monday. So we'll continue to live track those showers and storms for you coming up on the CW. All right, Heather, thanks. And one more time, don't forget tomorrow at 11 o'clock, our orange and white special previewing the orange and white game tomorrow at Neyland Stadium. Beautiful shot to start this Friday.